Hey everyone, Nike here. This is something I really wanted to check out for a long time. This is the Eligu Vecta laser engraver. So let's unbox it and check it out. This is the Eligu Vecta. Vecta, also called Gamma Ursae Majoris, is a star in the constellation of Ursa Major. Opening up the box, we have a FAQ flyer. Also included is a manual. It's quite detailed but hard to follow. This box includes the extension legs and these are the end feet and another set of extensions if you want more room for taller projects. This is the air assist module. The dial here controls the speed of the pump. Rubber feet so as to reduce the sound due to vibration. The air assist module uses a 10 amp power plug. We have an adapter which helps connect the laser module to the air assist module. Power supply for the cutter engraver. Air filter which helps filter out the fumes and dust when the engraving takes place. We are provided 5 replacement filters for the air filter. Safety goggles and cleaning cloth. Screws, tools and stickers are also provided. Now for the main parts. The frame is constructed using aluminium alloy. These parts are also called baffles as per the video. This is the laser mount with connectors. And here's the laser module. Another part of the frame, light but strong, being aluminium alloy. This is the controller, basically a motherboard where the cables all meet up and has the logic to control the engraver both in movement and cutting. We have the Eligu logo here on the side and the touchscreen control on the top. This is the other part of the frame which controls Y-axis movements and this is the opposite side. USB cable for interfacing the machine with a PC, tube which connects to the air assist module, Fixed rear cover plate which protects us from the laser when cutting takes place. Big shading plate which has magnets and can be easily attached and removed as needed. Optical shaft. Honeycomb panel which also has a steel plate below. Rotary module. This is cool, I'll show how it works later. And now for the assembly. I wanted to make an assembly video but I hit roadblocks and Eligu have a well made video tutorial too so find it here. Now that everything's put together, connect the power and the engraver is ready. Hmm, error code 60. One quick google search and I find that the memory card is not installed. Can't they tell me that in the first place? Before I can engrave, I need to set the laser module to the correct height. Pull out the focal length bar and tighten the screws to the laser module up or down to the correct height. I am engraving this piece of plywood. I am now selecting a sample design from the memory card and first I select mark perimeter and this enables us to know where the engraving is going to take place. We can see a light, it's not engraving but it just shows us the border of which it's going to engrave. Adjust as required. Make sure we attach the magnetic shading plate and hit carve. The Eligu Fegda has a 400 by 400 mm working area. Make sure to wear the protective glasses provided to protect your eyes. Whoa, it's totally burning. Stop, stop. I think the laser power is too high. I am now using a piece of cardboard and it's still the same. I need to lower the power. First time I didn't use the air assist and the room was smelling of burning wood. I have now connected the air assist module and this is the controller to control the speed. And this tube goes all the way up to the laser module. Now whenever it engraves or cuts, the smoke is directly pumped away. I dialed the power down to the right setting and now it's cutting onto cardboard without a problem. This aeroplane image is a sample file on the micro SD card and this is how the final output looks. The Eligu Fegda can engrave cut the following materials. Wood, acrylic. Leather, stone, bone, MDF, bamboo, tile, metal, stainless steel, aluminium, brass, ceramics, glass, mirrors, plastics and PVC. Laser gerbil is the software provided by Eligu on the memory card and this software can link via USB cable to the engraver and the commands can be sent to it directly. But as I didn't open up the memory card, I am using this trial version of Lightburn which has more features but it is a paid option. To test, I imported the Talking Stuff logo and it automatically made it grayscale. 
the transparent areas are not engraved and the darker it is, the more power is set. Dithering the image provides better gradation but as my logo is solid colored, it just has the dark and light parts. Export the file to the memory card, open it up on the engraver and wow, this is so cool. It's cutting into cardboard and the dark areas have completely cut through. We have some sample materials such as leather and aluminium. Let's try the same logo on leather. Check out the perimeter where it's going to be cut and I start carving. To make sure the leather piece doesn't move, I stuck it down using duct tape. Just make sure the laser doesn't hit the tape as it can burn. This is the filter which removes the smoke and dust particles from the air, making the engraver usable in a closed room. It is recommended to use the same in a well-ventilated room though. And this is how it looks and the T and S being dark are cut deeper into the leather. Custom keychains, anyone? I'm going to try metal, aluminium to be exact and I have this image of Hanuman, export and carve. I ran the carving for 5 passes where the laser traces onto the same area multiple times. Came out well if I do say so myself. Another cool attachment is this rotary module and in order to use it we need more height. These risers are provided in the box, add them to the 4 feet on each side and the engraver is elevated to the perfect height. We can set the width of the rotors using the screw here. To connect this module to the engraver, we are using the cable provided and replace the cable marked Y on the motherboard with the other end of this cable. Now the process is the same as earlier. We need the laser module to be moved higher and I have mounted it here. Let's check if the rotary module works. Using the controls via the touch screen, it's rotating when I hit the Y plus and Y minus buttons on screen. Let's try this jug. Mm, nope, it's going to hit the sides. Let's try a silver cup. Hmm, its odd shape is not allowing it to stay in place. I am now using this screwable side table leg and it works perfectly. We do need a perfect cylinder for best results. Set the focal length using the guide on the laser module. Check the engraving perimeter. Add the protective plate and hit carve. Wow, so cool. It's engraved on wood that too a cylindrical shape. The engraver can also be controlled using a mobile phone. Enable Wi-Fi on the engraver and you will need to connect to the engraver's hotspot to control it. Now we can send an image directly to the engraver, draw, engrave and also control the engraver manually. The Eligu Fake Dar laser engraver is surprisingly fast, accurate and quite powerful, especially as I have the 20 watt version with me. The manual is not that easy to follow, so find the assembly video on YouTube and you will be ready much faster. Also the assembly instructions are available on the memory card, so make sure to open that first. Once the assembly hurdle is passed, the Eligu Fake Dar engraver is really easy to use. I have tested it on wood, cardboard, leather and also aluminium and it works like a charm. Also make sure to connect the air assist module, else your entire room will be filled with smoke. It doesn't completely remove the smell, but I would gauge it to be around 50-70% to 70 filtered. It's a great machine for members who like to put things together and it's really fun to do so. And absolute beginners might have some problems, but it's mostly easy to put together. A really cool addition for DIYers. So what do you guys think? Would you pick one up? The Eligu Fake Da is available via Protomon Technologies and I'll add the link to the description. So that was the video. Make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.